Hey there, Internet. This is Kevin Coons. I'm here with my good friend, Pratibha Manaste. And we have here um, Faris Fayed, the only Syrian filmmaker to get nominated for Academy Award Oscar, which was for his last film, Last Men in Aleppo. His new film, The Cave, which is coming out in November, it just won the People's Choice Award for Best Documentary at the Toronto International Film Festival. Can you tell me what was the most challenging part about making this documentary? Every frame is like a, a challenging part. It's, it's you have to risk your life, put your life in the most dangerous and barbaric war, war as the, the United Nations described. We're talking about all the kind of uh, weapon use around you. And um, the United Nations described that it's the most barbaric war that happened in the current, uh, in the modern history which is like back to through the 200 years. Um, so you have, sometimes the frame is like, shoot the moment, it's like kind of surviving, and you like a kind of miracle that you managed to, to do that and in a cinematic way. Um, uh, but the most powerful things that I can tell you, like following the story of the main character, the, the main subject, a man in Balor, which is, she's a very inspired uh, um, woman. She was trying to change the society as well, trying to save a lot of the people, but also she's uh, uh, a feminist and creates the number of the women around her to work in the hospital and try to change the, uh, the sexism culture that's around her. Very interesting. We're going to go back for the questions. Sure. Um, we... You know, we were thinking, what has changed the most since since you released um, uh, both the films about uh, Syria? So you had Men in uh, Last Man in Aleppo, and now The Cave. But what do you think has changed, or is changing? It's a, it's a very dynamic and evolving. Or has situation. anything changed at all? Then? I mean, I don't know. Well, nothing changes. There is a lot of uh, uh, like the situation in Aleppo completely moved to uh, in Istanbul, but. In, in Aleppo, the siege of Aleppo was like around um, less than one year. But we're talking in Eastern Ghouta that used chemical attack, that used um, more than six times their siege, the longest run siege in the current history, as they went described, around six years siege. There's no way in, no way out. Uh, as well, there's a um, Daily bomb between the bomb and bomb is uh, two seconds and three seconds and then try um, and people have to to survive and there's a hospital one um, and few doctor one hospital like almost one one main hospital and a few doctor and uh, with uh, they have to serve uh, four hundred thousand uh, people in the siege area. Were you hesitant to make another film about the war in Syria, having experienced it through the first film and knowing the danger? What what encouraged you to want to want to make a second film? I think that the, this is the only thing that I have to do to, to my country. That uh, as you know, as like in a position of a person right now, there was a position as a filmmaker. Who I have the only thing that I do I can help with is telling the story. And the story is like a way to to bring the attention, a way to change uh, the society, a way for 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 get attention for a lot of uh, a lot of um, uh, people who try to do something in there. Um, uh, the film is, is making film. It's like kind of uh, facing the silence that try the, the dictatorship uh, do for the journalism. Arts, and this is the only way. As an artist, you can, I think, a position because you can say, "I can, I will have to, to, uh, to stand aside and then wait everything to finish, and then you can give my opinion." You have to, to react, and you have to do something because your art is a, in that moment is activism, activism, but in more, in more a way like to, to, to bring your stories, to touch the people, to. Inform the people, not in journalism way, inform the people in an emotional way, 
premium on both in the very emotional uh, touch and connections. And, and in my case, I'm a cinema person. I'm not just a journalist. I'm a person who comes from a person who studies the films and I want to bring the story can people sitting through it and try to, to connect with them, try like to, to, to find like the, the different level of, uh, of the, uh, the, the, the storytelling. Um, so every frame was this kind of saying, like the facing the silence, and every frame is a revolution in, 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 in a way, like, like what, what many artists do through their work, like uh, Picasso when he did his uh, um, one of the most beautiful uh, painting, uh, Hornika, he's um, just uh, he did it as a reaction and anger and and um, a statement for what's happened in Spain during the, the, the Nazi uh, occupation. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, earlier on, you mentioned about the, the dangers of, of, of filming in, in, in such an area, um, and I remember reading about uh, one of your interviews after uh, your first movie, where you talk about the outer forces that prevent your story from, from getting out there, or, you know, did you also come across you know similar issues when you were producing this this movie and, and would you be able to touch upon those? Yeah, I was in this movie was, was very difficult um, more than doing the other doing last thing in Aleppo. The cave is we dealing with a female subject subject that all the time she's under dangerous and under criticized criticism from the society and they're like uh, um, uh, society that I try like to control her and control her her work and we have to do, I have to take care of all of this situation also and I have to deal with this mm -hmm. sometimes like to film a lot of people looking to you following their, their eyes how you can follow a woman and film with her the moment where where you decide to involve as a cinema as a person who like the story they have to know that I have to I with myself, I know that the frame is a story. And if I sh this camera shake around and didn't meet the eyes of the people, they will lose a lot of information and a lot of emotional because I, I have to put the people in a balance between the information and the emotional and to manage the, mm -hmm. the audience to get this access to your subject. They need to have a good filming and a good footage in this way. Getting the, the, the this is was the mostly like I have to deal with that to put this uh, story so we have to film with a very high quality and this is high quality it's really take us like a long time uh, to deal with it even like in the post production uh, process in a way uh, getting every frame it was could uh, put our our life in, in a big danger so could could you uh, like could it Cues like cues like in, in, in our text. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So rewinding back a little bit, um, during the 2018 Oscars, President Trump prevented you from attending. Um, obviously, you're here in the U.S. right now doing press for this film. What has changed in the time between then? And do you think how, how did that make you feel, like not being able to attend this big Academy Awards ceremony just because of? One of the things also, I face the same situation with the cube. I have to do the sound work in in US, so I didn't have to get a visa to come and do the sound uh, here. So I did the sound in San Francisco in uh, Skywalker. Mm -hmm. So I was outside of US, so the people, the sound people, they send me the footage, the, the, their work to to, uh, to Denmark, and then I, I watch it and then I send it back. So we work like an artist without order in this way. <laughs> nice. It was like hard, but you know, um, I don't have a, as an artist, immigrant artist or refugee artist, I don't have the privilege to have access to trouble or trouble easily. It's very difficult for me. It's very hard. Like, you know, sometimes when I sit back and look to the cave, for example, as a movie, I feel like it's a miracle to manage to do this movie because also like, we have a fixing the footage in, in UK and I couldn't get a visa to go to UK to do also fixing the footage. So it's like, you know, to get move 
for the basic things, for basic thing for you, maybe to done it, you need to to uh, to get like to get through a very complicated process with the immigration system that also put a more difficult layer than more the layer that we have to deal with also and same level of the layer that we have to deal with during making uh, during shooting this is movie. So we, when you shoot this is movie, I know this is movie is the, the struggle and the uh, obstacle did it finish and they have to start a new obstacle which is like the obstacle of of or oh, oh, the, 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 the this hard situation which is like I have to to manage to travel to the places where I have to to finish the movie with the sound and the the, the, the image fixing the uh, the sound and the music composing all of this is I couldn't manage to travel to be with my team there but this is also make my team angry and upset and they I figure out because all of them they are like um, the Americans the British they all of them figure out that the, the ban or the administration decision is not just about the refugees or the immigrants who was non US people but also about the American themselves or the British themselves because this is mean that this is a decision didn't allow them to do their job in the right way or not cooperating in the international project and limited their work and uh, make it like specific in one places in a specific way and so it's destroying the culture collaboration and uh, culture exchange so th this is different level and uh, and, and there's a 27 uh, um, nationality work and this is from and I'm proud about this this the number of nationalities that work with the film that show you those artists who are involved in this is they are uh, work